Locally owned and operated for over 50 years, Delaware Camera is your number one spot for all your camera needs, education, accessories, printing, and more. Located at 2635 Delaware Avenue in Buffalo. Visit Cameraspot.com. Hey gang, welcome to True Believers Tech Talk Tuesday. This is a 63rd episode? 65, whoa, 65th episode, crazy. Who knew we'd get this far? Anyway, if you watch this, you know we do housekeeping first. Um, we're in the midst of a, a new shipment of Savage paper, Savage background paper. So I know people looking for white, people looking for mocha, people looking for, what are you looking for? Canary, those people got super black. We got all that stuff coming in today, so. Stop if you're looking for backgrounds for uh, for your photo portrait projects. S classes are back. We've had a couple of weeks off of classes, but we have a Saturday class this week. We have a six, not six thirty, ten thirty a.m. Saturday class this week. It's photo one hundred and one again. Um, I just sent an email out with all our classes. I restocked our classes. We got a class most weeks during the summer, so we have twelve classes on the uh, schedule for this summer. So if you're looking for classes, we've got. We've got, uh, we've got, uh, we've got, uh, we got 101. We've got composition, macro, travel, um, product photography. We've got night photography. We've got landscape photography and a bunch more. So if you're looking for classes to take your, take your uh, pictures up a level this summer, we've got it for you. And we also have some in-person stuff as well, which I know people have been clamoring for. We have some, uh, couple things coming up. We have a portrait class on June 11th. Um, we're doing a portrait workshop with uh, Vicente, who is going to be our guest in a few minutes. I'm going to show you how to take great portraits. It's going to be a workshop. We're going to have some spaces set up upstairs in Delaware camera, some stations. He's going to show you how to get the most out of your portrait photography. Uh, um, in addition to that, uh, it's a Sunday, June 11th. We're going to have free portraits um, from 6.30 to 7 that night. And all of these things are to benefit Ride for Roswell. We do a Ride for Roswell benefit every year because one of our alumni, Nicole Cook, does a Ride for Roswell every year. I think it's like her 10th or 11th year that she's done it. And we do a class for her every year, like clockwork. So when June rolls around, we have a class for Nicole's Ride for Roswell. Speaking of Ride for Roswell... We have a class, a wildlife photography seminar that Tamron is presenting on June 16th. It is at 6 o'clock on June 16th. Technically free, but we're taking donations for Ride for Roswell. So if you go to the website, our website, uh, click on the Eventbrite link, you can sign up for the class. Um, any donation will do. Give us a buck, you're in the class. You give us five bucks, you're in the class. If you can't donate, you're also in the class. Just give us a call and we'll put you in the class. But we'd love for people to donate and give a little bit towards the ride for Roswell and all that good stuff. So I'm going to get Vicente on in a minute. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with Vicente, who is our Artist of the Month. Hey, True Believers, welcome back. We have Vicente on for, I believe, the fifth time? Five crown! The five crown. It's a, it's a grand slam plus a solo homer he's got right here. So Is that a quintuple crown? <laughs> he's our artist of the month, and we're going to have it. We had him on. We're having him on today because he's got that class, that workshop coming up. I keep calling it a class, but it's a workshop. Coming up to benefit Ride for Roswell. So tell us a little bit about the concept with this class, Vicente. Um, so every year yeah. we do a Ride for Roswell class for Nicole Cook and her grandfather, uh, in memory of her grandfather. And mm -hmm. uh, every year we try to focus on something that is a skill set. And for me, it is portraiture. And that's yeah. also something that I think that a lot of people can benefit from learning about. You know, Definitely. Um, so the background for this class is making portraits, but we're taking it up a level this year with uh, utilizing Delaware camera space in order to have 
dual portrait studios essentially here yeah. to use for any attendees to mess around with. And you'll be able to ask questions of me or Nicole to understand how lighting systems work, how posing works, and you'll have models to shoot for the day. So I'm really excited about that yeah, particular portion. Yeah, it should be portion. cool. I know some people have already uh, signed up for it. It's you know it's a limited to 20, I think. So if you want to take this class, sign up today because it will fill up quickly. And it is filling up quickly. Well, in our world of filling up. And the other thing that I wanted to mention too was the um, like the second segment to, yes. to the class. Uh, so the second segment is um, it's a free portrait session uh, for anyone that could come through within the 30 minutes that we're having that from 6.30 to 7.30. I mean, I'm sorry, from 6.30 to 7 p.m. that day. Mm -hmm. um, all we ask is that you at least try to contribute something towards the ride for Roswell. If you can't, that's absolutely okay. You still get a portrait uh, that day anyway. You will be walking out with your prints. Mm -hmm. So the same day that you're, you're getting your portrait made, we will be printing that out for you. Mm -hmm. So anyone that can make it within that time span of 6.30 to 7 p.m., come through, you will get a portrait for free. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's a great, uh, a great, because um, people need portraits. Like, you know, it's yeah, kind of tough sometimes, yeah. you know. You never know who can't afford a portrait or, or they're, yeah. they're on hard times. They just want a family portrait. Yeah, and, and it's good to have portraits because one of the things always working here, you know, not to get morbid, but sometimes people cool. come in, they need a picture for their obituary, and it's it's a driver's license picture. So Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. But it's, to, cool. Yeah. It's, it's cool to chronicle your story through time. I mean, when I was a kid, I have like two pictures of my mom from mm -hmm. when I was a kid, but like I've got my kids now, they got pictures of me, I got pictures of them yeah. throughout all the years, which is cool because, you know, I mean, photography is more normal now, but yeah. it's cool to have that. So No, I think that that's essential, especially yeah. if you have a family. Yeah, totally. You should have a record of who you are. Through the years, as Kenny Rogers says. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's talk about you. Yeah. Let's okay. talk about the artist that is Vicente. Let's talk about your lifelong project that's been going on. What's, tell us about your project that people don't know about your project. Uh, you're just talking about the portraits. Yeah, let's talk about okay. the portraits. Let's um, talk about the portraits. So, uh, yeah, I, I you have the projects going on. I've, actually, I've got four. Okay, four truly. <laughs> um, so, um, for those of you that know me from other uh, mm -hmm. other web series that we've done, and also just from mm -hmm. working at Delaware Camera in the past, yeah, uh, I am a documentary portrait photographer. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I focus on making portraits of strangers for the most part, mm -hmm. and I like to look for individuals that are what I would consider overlooked. Um, it. I don't like to, and I hope that this doesn't come off sideways, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't like to explain it in like a pretentious manner of like, you know, people that are downtrodden. It's like, no, I'm, I'm looking for people that I think are not usually paid attention to or mm -hmm. viewed as beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something that I've been focusing on since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So anytime that I pass a stranger uh, or someone who is unfamiliar to me that I think has something for that day, mm -hmm. then I ask if I can make a photograph of them and I try to do it in the in the best light possible. Okay. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I do have a couple of other projects. Tell me about your other projects. Well, there is I one I probably that... know about them, but tell, <laughs> tell the world about them. There, uh, there is one project that I am currently working on in collaboration with uh, the Community Action Organization, mm -hmm. uh, the CAO, and it has to do with a workshop that I just completed uh, for senior citizens. They're called the Ageless Wonders. They're a wonderful group uh, of senior citizen shout out women. Shout Ageless Wonders. Yeah, shout out the Ageless Wonders. <laughs> They're a wonderful group of senior citizen women, and it's not only for women, but that's, that's what's in the group right now. Yeah. Um, um, predominantly black women uh, at the Pratt Willard Community Center on the east side of Buffalo that I knew from when I was working at a local art institution uh, a couple years back. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been making uh, photo journals or legacy journals. Mm -hmm. And this idea was originally uh, conceptualized by Yvonne Harrison, who's their leader. Mm -hmm. But we decided to take it in the direction of writing and photography base. Um, but well, I mean, that's what a journal is, essentially. It's writing. But the thing is, is that uh, having that photography base in the beginning is really essential to helping anyone that they pass this journal down to understand who they are mm -hmm. and the experiences that they've had while yeah. doing this workshop and more. Mm -hmm. And uh, the cool thing is, actually, is that I have one picture from that right here. Uh, and this is me making cyanotypes uh, with uh, some of my students in the workshop. Yeah. Um, but this has been absolutely wonderful. Uh, creating photo journals with them has been incredible i get to photograph all their journals on thursday this week yeah and then after that starts the project of photographing each individual in their homes and at the community center very cool yeah it's very cool so i'm excited about that it's very cool. big on community it's really Tell cool. me about some other projects oh, man okay so you want some <laughs> in-depth stuff uh all right yeah. so 
there is another project that I have that uh, you were talking about not to be morbid, and I think that uh, in in this uh, in this arena that we have here, uh, I I want to make sure that I'm being sensitive mm -hmm. um, as well as thorough and honest. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is something that I have been working on for a long time, but I really need to get back to because there are people that I have I have told that I've committed to this project. Mm -hmm. um, but now that I I have more free time, I can I can actually focus on it. There's a project that I had that focuses on um, individuals of faith. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not particularly a person uh, of faith, mm -hmm. uh, but I was raised Catholic. And I think that it's it's something to try to dive deep into why people have the faith that they do and mm -hmm. what drives that faith, mm -hmm. even in turmoil or catastrophe, um, mm -hmm. uh, as well as like trauma. Yeah. And I am trying to put together a body of work that is documentary images of specific individuals, uh, many of them marginalized, who have suffered uh, through and with faith. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to figure out how I'm supposed to go about this in a cohesive manner, okay. even after working on it for the last four years. And I think that that's the special thing about coming up with projects. Yeah. You know, we talk about the artist thing, artist of the month thing. I mean, yeah. what makes me an artist is the fact that, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff that, that I think up, it, it has to be fleshed out for a while mm -hmm. in order for me to to feel like I'm getting it right or that this mm -hmm. is the right way to go about it. Okay. Is that all your projects? This is not all of it, but I, if you want, if you want me <laughs> you to- You said you had four. I want the fourth one. Okay. Give that's me, well, give, we give just did two. Project. We did, well, we had your original project. Your, your, then we had the Ageless Wonders. Now we have this one. Mm -hmm. Now we have one more. Okay. So um, there is one that I've been working with the boxing gym that, uh, yeah. that I go to. some of that so, stuff, yeah. Uh, Lackawanna Boxing Club is a boxing gym that- uh, that I attend, uh, I, I train to fight. I, I train for uh, like tournaments mm -hmm. and um, I train for bouts, sorry, I said tournaments, but mm -hmm. th that's what they are anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. the, the thing is, is that I thought that it was, it was an incredible place when I first started visiting uh, because mm -hmm. there are a lot of kids that are from marginalized groups mm -hmm. uh, and uh, POC communities mm -hmm. that come to Lackawanna Boxing Club. Um, a lot of them are from uh, like, low socioeconomic like levels mm -hmm. uh, in their homes. And yeah. I, I think that's the correct way to say that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and they get something really wonderful out of going to a place where they get to exercise and they get to learn a, a martial art, essentially. I mean, this yeah. is a skill. Yeah. Uh, boxing is absolutely an art form and they, they beat on their craft. Like essentially they, they like, they commit to this. They commit to wanting yeah. to fight. They commit to uh, wanting to make something better of themselves yeah. in any way possible. And I think that it's incredible watching people do that. It's also incredible watching people command like a will out of themselves. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's something that I've been focusing on as well. Yeah, making my, pictures there. As you know, my son boxes. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's I think it's a cool like uh, release for kids and it's absolutely it does create like because I don't know if do they have kids groups over there at Lackawanna. Yeah. So like like the kids like it's they like it's kind of like they're like a little group that like kind of come together every week and like you know they they race they box and they do all sorts of stuff. Oh, so you mean like kids classes? Yeah. Okay, I think that that's something that they're trying to fact uh, like figure in or factor into this. Yeah. Um, but we do have like groups of kids that okay. come through. Oh, I see what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Um, Same difference. Sometimes students too for yeah. uh from the guy who runs the place. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, they come in and they they uh have a class every week every Saturday morning and all that good stuff. So. Let's get off a of box and get back into yeah, yeah, you. So, do you predominantly shoot film? Yeah, um, I've been I've been shooting more film than digital. Yeah. Uh, for the last five years, and it makes me take my time. It makes me focus on my subjects. It makes me um, become a little less uh, preoccupied with the idea of having instant gratification mm -hmm. out of the image that I get. Yeah. Um, with digital, you know, there's something called they call it chimping. Where, Chimping, you know, yes. you, you look at your screen all the time just to yeah. make sure that your picture is good. Well, for this, I have 36 exposures and I have to make sure that I'm taking everything into account. Mm -hmm. There are two photographers that have had a huge impact on me uh, that I know personally mm -hmm. uh, outside of the ones that I really like to look at the work of. Mm -hmm. um, but that's Jeffrey Barnes and also Charles Waldorf. And when it comes to those two photographers, um, Charles and Jeff had always stated to me since I was like in college and that's when, mm -hmm. that's when we met each other. Um, that you get it right in camera first. Definitely. You always get it right in camera. And I understand that people have tools that they like yeah. to utilize, like Photoshop. The thing is, is that for me, it's essential to get it right in camera. 
try to make sure that everything that I want is within that frame, and mm -hmm. then execute the image. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you haven't thought of like how much you did? What do you so? What do you use digital for? If you use digital sometimes. Ah, okay. So digital, I always use for uh, big time commission jobs. Like if I'm doing mm -hmm. uh, candid photographs for yeah. you know uh, a local company, mm -hmm. then that's what I'll use digital for. If I'm doing uh, portraits, like commercial portraits for a local mm -hmm. company, I'm yeah. using digital. Uh, but if an editorial decides to ask me, hey, do you do you mind photographing this mm -hmm. in the way that you feel most comfortable? Yeah. Like, no, of course I don't mind because the way that I feel most comfortable, yeah. and I'll shoot it in film. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, do you um, so tell me about your so you shoot professionally, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me about your studio. Uh, Even though we've had you on here before, Pat, but let's yeah. let's let's refresh people's memories. So the studio is at 105 Germain Street mm -hmm. uh, in Black Rock, Buffalo. I share it with uh, one of my best friends, who's also a photographer, uh, Sarah Wintel. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a bright and beautiful space. It used to mm -hmm. be an old storefront, uh, but that studio is mostly used for whenever I have a commissioned portrait or a mm -hmm. headshot that I have to make. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people need headshots for their business; they yeah. need them for graduation. Mm -hmm. That's what I use the studio for. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also been using it as a place of inspiration. So yeah. when I go, I bring some of my prints and I try to uh, try to look at where I'm going with uh, my, my portraits that I've been making on the street, any street mm -hmm. photographs that I have. Um, and I try to get some inspiration off the light that comes in through the studio. I mean, mm -hmm. we've got really beautiful light that comes through. Um, so I use it as a as a place of inspiration. Do you do, do, you, do you do like natural light portraits in the studio? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I actually favor doing natural light portraits in the studio mm -hmm. over using the, the strobes mm -hmm. that we have. And natural light with film, that's like... It's the tops. That's perfect. Yep, that, that's it. It's truly. the tops, that's as truly. one of our customers That's truly says. it. <laughs> I, if, I had, um, if I had the image to show you, I, I wish I sent it to Will earlier. I forgot about this one. But there is one photograph that I have of my friend uh, Augustus. He's an actor here in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. And uh, that picture was made with natural light in front of the background that we have there. Mm -hmm. And I love that image of him. Um, I, I really wish that I could have sent that, but uh, I love using natural light in that studio. Do you have that yeah. picture on, on your Instagram? Yep, yep, you'll see him. It's Gus doing this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, So people need to see that. They can definitely check it out over yeah, there. Yeah, just to see how that natural light works, especially with film. Yeah. yeah. So um, what, what, what are you shooting this week? What, what's, what inspires you? Like, are you, do you have, <laughs> like, when you go shoot, shooting this do you, week? like, do you wake up in the morning, like, I'm gonna go shoot, do make some portraits. Do I rub today. my hands together too when I get up like Birdman? Like, <laughs> this is what I'm shooting today. Um, yeah, no, that that's exactly what I do. So, aside from doing the workshops and any seminars, like uh, yeah. with any community oriented groups, um, if I have a free day uh, mm -hmm. aside from training, then I go outside and I make pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get better at uh, waking up early in the morning to go outside, make pictures, and then do what I have to do in the middle of the day, and then going back out and making pictures later on in the day. Uh, but I like to make pictures all through the day as I can. And I always do have a goal, especially during the spring and the summertime, mm -hmm. always have a goal to go outside and, and shoot at least two portraits, at least. Okay. You know, um, but it's obviously more than that a lot of the time. Just yesterday I shot uh, three rolls of 35 millimeter. It know. gets expensive. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Um, but I, I always have a goal to make pictures. And yeah. I think that that's important. If we're talking about like, uh, I know that you didn't say this, but being an artist, I think that it's, important to to make sure that you are always working on your craft like that yeah, you definitely. you have a goal through the day to be one step better mm -hmm. and for me that means that i have to keep on making pictures every single day i prefer to get worse you prefer <laughs> i prefer <laughs> to the get pressure. worse see where i end up and then so from there i climb out of the hole to wrap this up so yeah. I, you know you and me are going on a little trip tomorrow yes so are you going to make some portraits when we go on this trip yeah we're gonna have of a course. couple of portraits made in, in this other town. Of course, absolutely. Okay. And you talk about wrapping this up now. Now you you're gonna get me talking because it's let's talk. Uh, we went on that. Uh, I, I went on that trip with Jeff. Uh, that yeah. cross country trip. Yeah. Let's talk um, about that. So I went to uh, Arizona with my good friend uh, Jeffrey Barnes. As you guys may know, Jeffrey Barnes and uh, his son Ethan, who's also a photographer. Yeah. And we drove from Buffalo all the way to pretty much Phoenix, Arizona, mm -hmm. and. All through the way, Jeff makes a lot of pictures of landscapes. Uh, he likes architecture as well, too. He does a beautiful job with that. So does Ethan. Yeah. Um, and I was constantly looking for people to make pictures of. In fact, uh, some of the people that you saw in the pictures that popped up uh, that will show. Yep, those right there are from Tombstone. Yeah. Um, I was always looking for people the whole way through. 
and that doesn't stop no matter who I'm traveling with or where I'm traveling to. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to have a really wonderful trip out towards the West again in three weeks after I'm done with some of my contract work. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to get to Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, cool. And in that, I'm, I'm absolutely going to be looking for people and what types of subcultures I can find while mm -hmm. there. So, yeah, um, always like always looking to make pictures. Do you get a lot of rejections when you're trying to make pictures of people? Honestly, not a lot. Yeah. Not a lot, but it does happen. Guy, man. Oh, most people are game. Yeah, most people are game. Um, like sometimes people will tell me, no, I really don't want my picture taken or no, I'm not about that. Sometimes it gets a little more aggressive, mm -hmm. um, which is always funny to me. I'm not going to laugh in somebody's face. Uh, I, I won't do that. But the thing is that it's it's always funny to me that people have such like a strong reaction to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't really get too many, uh, too many no's when it comes to pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. And... That's cool. Like I'm, I'm happy about that. But you also have to remember if you're if you're looking to make street photographs, yeah. if you're looking to make street portraits, people are gonna say no, and you have to you have to get behind rejection. It's like yeah, it happens. Okay, I know get we have this. It. I know we have this class coming up in a yeah. few weeks. But what's your like your best tip for making mm -hmm. someone comfortable enough for you to take their photo on the street? Get to talking to them first. Mm -hmm. Don't come up to them in an aggressive manner with your camera. Mm -hmm. Try to get to know them, even if it's for just a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't start off with, hey, can I make a picture of you? Or, hey, mm -hmm. can I take a picture? Or, um, and sometimes some photographers just raise up their camera and they, and they snap the image, you yeah. know? Um, and I'm not going to judge anybody for that. I've, I've done that. Mm -hmm. It's once in a blue moon, but I, I've done that a couple of times. Uh, but making people feel comfortable by making them feel human. You know, Definitely. if I want to make a picture of you, I'm not going to just race up to you i'm going to talk to you for a bit i'm going to talk to you about the thing that i find interesting about you i see that there's gray in your beard i want to make a photograph of you I'm because old. of this you know um that shirt <laughs> that you have on it has a lot of really nice colors there you go you know i i want to get closed off yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't compliment me <laughs> um I, I yeah i want to make people feel comfortable that's all and i, I want to make sure that i have an honest and genuine conversation with somebody it definitely comes through in your pictures definitely yeah. like you right. see like, even though you don't know people that you're shooting, it seems like you know them from how they are to the camera. I know people, other people see that, but definitely mm -hmm. is, it's definitely what I see when I see your pictures. I would hope. I, I think that, I like saying I think this. It's, mm -hmm. it's not like I, I, I know this for, for certain, but I, I think that what my goal is mm -hmm. for every picture that I take, I think that what the goal is, I have an idea, that mm -hmm. it's... It's for you to be able to truly connect with the individual that you're looking at in the photograph mm -hmm. and not necessarily assume anything about them, but feel like you've seen them on the street, that you've passed by them, and that maybe you might take a second glance mm -hmm. uh, next time you, you know, you're at Hoyt Lake or next time you're uh, on Genesee Street. It's like, okay, well, this person deserves a second, gla uh, second glance mm -hmm. together. I, I like the idea of doing a double take for an individual that you might have passed over before. Okay. And there's something connecting in that. All right, cool. Yeah. So anyway. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to wrap it up. So remember, we got that portrait workshop, June 11th, uh, 5 to 6.30. Um, free portraits at 6.30 in the store. Yeah. And if people need to find you, reach out to you, Say hi. Say I want to hire you. Where do they go? Well, uh, you can go to my website www.vicente. That's v i c e n t e rondon r o n d o n dot com, or you could go to Vicente Rondon Photo on Instagram uh, if you'd like. Uh, I mean, if you just want me to to shoot a photograph of you on film, we can do that too. Uh, just because you think that you might be an interesting person, we could talk about that. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but yeah, you can find me on either of those two places. All right. Uh, until next time, our our uh, what's in your bag is next week, so keep an eye out for that. Who are you guys bringing? We're figuring it out. Oh, we're, okay. we're in negotiations with a few parties. Anyway, <laughs> okay. we'll see y'all next week. Peace. <laughs> Locally owned and operated for over 50 years, Delaware Camera is your number one spot for all your camera needs, education, accessories, printing, and more. Located at 2635 Delaware Avenue in Buffalo. Visit Camerspot.com 